Today we will start with the verse number 123 of the Surah Al-Ali Imran. Uh, the family of Imran in the Bible. Imran is written as Joachim, as the grandfather of Blessed Mother uh, of uh, uh, Prophet uh, Jesus Isa alayhi salam. And this chapter was revealed in the sequence of Revelation as the 89th chapter, and it is now in the third position in the sequence of recitation. And we are at the verse number 123. And inshallah, we will be will uh, begin with this. Uh, in chapter 123 and uh, 120-124-5, uh, this is talking about two battles. One is the Battle of Badr, the first major battle, which was uh, between Mus uh, 313 Muslims and uh, 1,000 uh, Meccans or, or, or Kuffar of the Quraysh. And they actually came with all the equipment and all preparedness and Muslims have only eight swords with among 313 and only about a um, few uh, camels riders some horse riders and the rest of them were on their foot and they did not even have swords so they were using a sticks of the tree as to fight and defend themselves so this has been a very unusual situation so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding Muslim about that in verse number 123 Allah certainly supported you at Bada when you were weak so fear Allah that you may be grateful. When you were saying to the believers, shall it not suffice you that your Lord should help you with three thousand of the angels sent down? for you. Of course, if you stay patient and fear Allah, and they come upon you even in this heat of theirs, your Lord will reinforce you with five thousand of the angels, each having distinct marks. <laughs> And Allah did this solely to make it a good news for you, and so that your heart may be at rest with it. Otherwise, victory is from none but Allah, the All-Powerful, the All-Wise. <laughs> Allah helped you so that he may cut off a flank of disbelievers or throw them down in disgrace and they go back frustrated so verse number 123 to 127 is about the battle of Badr the first battle fought between Muslims and there's a lot of details about it I will try to uh, not to go in those you can read about what happened between Muslims and and um, and the kuffar in the battle of Badr, um, there was a little bit of a details about it. In Badr battle, what initially happened is that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent a, a a party of expedition with about 10, 15 people to scout over the caravan which is coming from Syria, bringing a lot of wealth. 
uh, Abu Sufyan was the leader of the caravan and he sensed and he says uh, because in those days before the caravan moved because they had a lot of money and wealth and trading material which was quite a bit of that time so what they used to do is for safety they used to send people ahead and it has been the way all countries or people do to see if there is any trouble anybody's waiting to you know attack them so they brought the news that there is a, uh, a muslims of medina or because medina was in between uh, syria was north and mecca was south and medina was in the middle of 300 kilometers northwest of the path to the syria so they brought the news that the Muslims are there and they might be attacking on you. And Muslim had the news. So when the Muslim group went for expedition, there was two people were coming before that. There was another caravan with a very few people and that group of Muslims were not authorized to attack or invade on them. And some of them attacked and they captured one person and they apparently killed one person. So. Prophet Sallallahu got upset with them and he said, I didn't allow you to attack on anybody. I just sent you to do the expedition. So this is why there was already fear that a Muslim might attack Abu Sufyan's caravan, which is next coming behind it. So some people say that was a badr e sohra that minor badr happened before the major badr in, uh, fight happened. And some people blame Muslim for doing that. But the fact is that the Muslims, when they were uh, exiled or they immigrated from Mecca to Medina to save themselves for their safe of the, saving their faith, the Meccans would not let them take their family, would not let them take their wives and children and their wealth, their business, their property, their anything. They said, you cannot take anything from here. So they were basically made homeless to come to Medina. So then Muslims had a reason to stop them and take the uh, whatever they have because this was now their separate country so this is where something was going on between muslims and um, and the kuffar of that time and muslims definitely were a very small community so when that badr e sohra which happened a prophet was very unhappy and he said i did not allow you and then prophet gave blood money for the person who got killed and that attack happened during the month of Rajab. The Rajab was the time which is sacred month and they accused, which we read about before, that uh, Meccans accused Prophet of uh, doing a fight during the sacred month. So, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the Baqarah, we read that it is more bigger sin of attacking, uh, stopping people to come and pray in the house of Allah than uh, violating the sanctity of the sacred month. So that's where the, uh, that sacredness was abolished. Uh, this is what happened. So now when this caravan was coming with Abu Sufyan with a lot of wealth and money of all the Meccans invested in it because that's how they used to do it. That one person will make a caravan who would go and all the people of Mecca will uh, in, give them whatever they have and they will give them to sell it into the other countries and give them a, 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 a money whatever price they set and keep the commission. So this is how they used to do the trade and this was allowed not interest it was a business trade so the the person who is taking the product which prophet and khatija radiallahu anha they both used to do it that prophet was the, uh, would take the caravan and she would say sell my this business product for this much money and whatever you sell above is your profit so this is how they used to do it prophet peace be upon him was the trader in that way all the meccans were like that so this uh, so abu sufyan's caravan when it was about to cross the Medina, so he got the news that the Muslims are preparing to attack you. Uh, so he sent a messenger to Mecca to got to get the help. So they got prepared and they brought about thousand people with all the army and thing. And the thing was, the plan was that to destroy them, finish them off as get rid of them. So when they arrived and actually Abu Sufyan changed his path, and he bypassed the Muslims and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them that you wanted to have that one without much fight but Allah brought them in front of the uh, this 1,000 strong army prepared for the war with the women and the singers and musicians and all the you know kind of motivational uh, poetry and all this and they would have each person had a responsibility each uh, day of the, uh, the of this uh, caravan of the war uh, to feed them so they would slaughter 10 uh, camel and all which we talked about it so when they somehow uh, came into the situation Prophet found that the caravan of the Abu Sufyan has bypassed and now they are supposed to face the army and uh, the Ansar the local of Medina they were not asked to do this part of fight so Prophet stopped by and he, he made a sermon and he asked 
particularly directing towards the people of Medina who are the original resident, the Ansar, the helpers, that uh, are you willing to stand up with us to fight in this situation? And some of the people were very confused. They were not sure. But three times when Prophet asked, then uh, one of these uh, leaders stood up and he says, Prophet, O oh, Messenger of Allah, if your intention is to ask us, yes, we have make an oath and we have promised that we will live and die for you. We will protect you with our life and our family, our children. At that time, Prophet says, okay, I'm satisfied with you. So these, this is how things happen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning about it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you in the battle of Badr where you were very few in numbers, 313 reported and you were ill-equipped, you had no preparation, you were not even trained fighters and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent 3,000 angels uh, to help you in the battle and if you have a firm belief and faith in Allah, you would have marked 5,000 soldiers who were marked to be distinct and fight with you and this has been mentioned that those people who died in the battle of Badr, uh, they apparently had uh, either right hand cutting or neck struck in. These are the two signs were those who were killed by angels in the battle. So this is what has been mentioned. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا جَاءَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بُشْرَ لَكُمْ وَلَتْتُطْمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُكُمْ بِي That Allah had made it solely to do it, bring it a good news for you and give peace to your heart. So these are the things Allah is reminding وَمَنْ نَصْرَ إِلَّا مِنْ إِنْدَ اللَّهُ The help comes from nowhere except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لِيَقْدَى تَرْفَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا So Allah had helped you so that you may cut off the flanks of the disbeliever because this was a major, major blow and insult to the Quraysh who have thousands of years have not been defeated and this was an ill-equipped minority and those were weak people who are not even able to fight and prepared for the fighting. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing this event and then the next uh, verse is 128 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning about uh, in the battle of Uhud. So now you see the both Badr and Uhud are mentioned in back and forth verses to just to understand this verse in the battle of Uhud I will uh, explain to you let's listen to what it says here <laughs> you have no authority in the matter unless Allah forgives them or punishes them as they are unjust to <laughs> To Allah belongs what is in the heavens and what is in the earth. He forgives whomsoever he wills and punishes whomsoever he wills. Allah is most forgiving, very merciful. Yeah. So these two verses are also, this is about the battle of Ahad. So verse number 121 to 123 was Ahad and 128 and uh, 129 is about Ahad. But the, between 124 to 127, they are about Badr. So I was, man, myself man was first studying this, I was kind of a bit confused that these one coming back and forth between two. So here's the battle of Ahad is when happened is when Prophet um, was, himself injured in the battle of Uhud, the second attack which was done to Muslims. There were 3,000 Meccans who came along against Muslims were about 1,000 and among them there were 300 hypocrites because the leader of the hypocrites, Abdullah bin Ubay bin Sulul, he wanted Muslims to stay in Medina as a prophet also. The, the opinion of the prophet and the hypocrites was in agreement. Because initially Prophet did not want to go out of Medina to fight the battle of Ahad. He wanted to stay in Medina and wanted to, wanted to defend city from inside. But the people of uh, young people who could not take part in the battle of Badr, they were very emotionally charged and they wanted to go out and fight and, and face the enemy outside. Prophet kind of insisted a couple of times and when they did not agree, they just were so excited. They keep raising voice over Prophet. So Prophet ran inside the home, dressed up in the armor and came out. So when he came out in the armor, the companions of those who realized that we were probably imposing our opinion on Prophet and they said, Oh Messenger of Allah, maybe we were wrong. Whatever you wanted, we want to do that. Prophet says, once a Prophet put an armor, he does not take it off. 
And this is where um, the uh, decision was that they should go out and fight. Because Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul had 300 hypocrites, but they were not exposed. So this is what the moment where their exposure came in. So he had his 300 uh, supporters or uh, followers, and he had hated Prophet because he was supposed to be crowned to be the king of Medina before the immigration of Prophet and that program was canceled. And that's why he just had no choice but to endure his uh, failure of his uh, celebration. So he keep coming up with the different thing to, uh, you know, hurt Muslim or, or, or damage their situation. And he would often spread rumor. He would talk things which was just to insult and just to, you know, down, uh, put them down. So what he said that he, they all then decided thousand of them Medinites came out to defend uh, people. So when they came out in the half of the path, he took his 300 people and said, because your prophet did not listen to my opinion and they, he preferred his people's opinion over my opinion, I'm not going to go up. So he took 300 people uh, with him. So now there are only 700 so left. And this was the time when it was very heartbreaking for the Muslim because now they knew that they have, they have 3,000 coming against them and who are again equipped and all that. So this is the time when the prophet was injured in this particular uh, uh, attack uh, by the Meccans. Uh, when he got hurt, his four of the teeth got uh, uh, martyred and then he got a, a wound on his lip and his cheek. And he was bleeding pretty bad. And at that time, he used the word how those nations could be saved when they tried to kill their own prophet or hurt him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not want him to curse those people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that, Laysa laka min al -amri shay. You have no authority in the matter who Allah guides, or who Allah forgive, or who Allah punish. So they are for, uh, punishable, but they are unjust. We know that Allah says, your job is to invite. As a Muslim, our job is to take care of the world. We are supposed to be enduring the hardship. And then for the next verse, Allah says, to Allah belongs what is between heavens and earth. Whoever he wills, he forgive. The whoever he wills, he punish. Indeed, Allah is all forgiving and all merciful. So mercy of Allah is even over the disbelievers as long as they come to seek the forgiveness of Allah and repent of their sin. So this is something to understand that even Prophet was told, don't curse them because had Prophet cursed them, they would have been perished. And the wisdom behind it that the Prophet is the mercy for all humanity, for all creatures, all alameen, all the worlds and all the multiverse which we know. So we as a Muslim are supposed to be taking care of the nature for entire creation of God. And we are supposed to be, whether a person is Muslim or non-Muslim or whoever it is, we should be in the position to participate in the position where we could take, make decisions. We should be able making laws and all that. Yesterday, I forwarded you a YouTube from Germany, a parent's taught their child that LGBT thank you, is not Islamic. And the German police came in and forcefully, child was crying and begging and family was crying and begging. They forced the children away, took them away from the parents just because of saying that. So we need to understand that's a little child who was screaming. It was very, very, very uh, heartbreaking to watch that video. But this is how the people are. So unless we are in the position to make laws and rules in the country and participate where we are allowed to participate in decision making for the betterment of the mankind, we should not sit outside. And this is what my opinion is. And allowed we are allowed. In the old days, the people were not allowed to be part of the government. And as you know, when the seven slippers, they were part of the garment and they were there. And so they were trying their best to help that. Same thing happened in the time of Pharaoh. There was the people who were believers of Musa alayhi salam, Moses, peace be upon him. And that person wanted to help. And this is how it happens. We need to be part in the political system so we could make a difference. So we could say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, we tried. People didn't listen is their call. Next verse is about interest, earning and eating. Let's listen to this verse, verse number 130. O you who believe, do not eat up the amounts acquired through riba, interest doubled and multiplied. Fear Allah, so that you may be successful at <laughs> And 
and fear the fire that has been prepared for the disbelievers. A bill and the messenger so that you may be blessed. So verse number 130 to 132 are talking about the interest eating or earning or making a business of interest. This prophet forbid in the time of the Hajjatul Vida, the farewell Hajj, prophet says that all the interest trading and earning is under my feet, means destroyed and perish. His beloved uncle uh, Abbas used to do the business trading with the interest and he says today this is all abolished, no more interest earning. And this is very important thing, a riba, what is riba? Adafa mudafa. what is compound interest for the multiplication which is defined in English as usury. Usury is what? That if I borrow from you $100 and then I want, uh, we have set a term that I have to pay you back uh, with $110 in next month. And if I could not come up with 110, if I got 109, if I got 108, and if I come to you, then what you do in compound interest, the adafa mudafia, which is usury, you will say, keep the $100, give me the $8. Next time you will give me $112. Next time you give me $114. And this is how the poor people were getting more and more in debt and they could not return the money. They could not even get them free. And sometimes this is how the Jewish trader used to do. And they used to take their children, their wives, their daughters, their son, and keep them as their adopted son or sometime as a slave. And this is how uh, business was done, which is very, very harsh in, in America, by the way, usury is not allowed. And this is what happened. I mean, you filed chapter 11 in America, usury is not allowed. And uh, interest earning, prophet says, the one who give interest, the one who take interest, the one who write interest, the one who is witness of that, all of them will be in the hellfire. And that in the Surah Baqarah, we read about it. The prophet says that whoever wants to do the business interest trading, that he is declaring war against Allah and his prophet. So who can fight against Allah? This is how bad of this thing is. Interest never brings wealth. Interest makes you no blessing, even though people have wealth and money. And you will know, you would, you should know, I'm sure people knows about it. Then the Jewish people, they don't do interest trading among each other. They only give interest to the non-Muslims or non-Jewish. And Islam says, no, all humanity is just. You have to do non-interest with everybody. When you cannot do the interest, when you're forced to do a business transaction, and if you get interest money, then ulama says that you pay your interest from that interest money, do not use it for your self-consumption. So this is where uh, Islam is about. Interest earning is forbidden, and it is a war declared by Allah and his prophet against that person who does that. You can imagine how strong of an opinion is that.